Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me back out on the banks of the River Weaver and we're in search of those bream and skimmers on the feeder. Before we do get into this week's blog, I just want to say thank you to everybody that left such nice comments on the last video. It really is appreciated and thank you very much for the kind support that you do show the channel. So last week we had some really good fishing on this venue and one of the biggest lessons I've learned in fishing is always make the most of it because nothing in fishing lasts forever. So that's what we're doing today, out on a Sunday morning, just trying to get a few bites. Let's waste no time at all, let's have a look at the setup, the swim, and how we're going to approach it. Looking at the swim, there's plenty of signs of fish, like last week, there's bubbling. Just on this line here, there's fish topping all over the place, and I was thinking about going on the stick float this morning, but one thing I am enjoying is the feeder fishing, so yeah, we're out for a few hours on the feeder. We're gonna go down one line, we've been clipped up just a bit downstream of that gap. We're not going as far out as last week over here, we're fishing more here, and it is a beautiful morning to be on the bank. They have given rain about midday, so yeah, we are only out for a few hours, but what a beautiful place to wet a line. So looking at the side tray, we've got plenty of ground bait, and these bits in there left from other sessions where I've just kept it. In there you've got the hinders supercharged, you've got their little gem pellets, corn, maggots, a few casters, and there's some of the poly come in there as well. The main mix that's going to be going in the feeder is this beautiful hemp and casters. Just look at them. That hinders hemp and those crunchy casters are hoping what's going to attract them breaming. Hook bait wise we've got the corn that's in the mix and we've got a tangle. <laughs> of worms. When I arrived in the swim I put five big feeder fools of that ground bait and that hemp down the middle and you join me now on the first cast of the day. Just going to give it around about five or ten minutes on each cast just to get a better bait down there. The setup for the session is my Corum all rounder quiver in 1.25 pound test curve. In the end I've got the one ounce tip. I've teamed that up with one of the snapper reels and on there I've got six pound line. Down to the business end, nice and simple, I've got a float stop on which I've got a feeder bead, then another float stop and a couple of loops just to kick the hook link out, nice and simple and on there I've got a £5 hook link and a size 10 hook down to a big worm. So we put five feeders in when we first arrived before setting the gear up and probably on the third cast now on that big feeder just to get some bait down, I'm just starting now to see the odd little indication there's one or two bubbles coming up out there the odd one just giving away that there might be some fish around and that's what you try to do at the start in my head the thought process is let's get some bait down there that big feeder get some bait on the bottom you know it might take you an hour to attract them in but like we seen last week when they arrive it can be quite frantic but that's what i'm doing at the moment just trying to get that better bait down so we've been fishing for probably 20 minutes on about six or seven casts and that tip has just slowly pulled round and we're into the first bream most definitely of the session so with all the rain last week i didn't get any of the bream out to hold up the camera but that's just giving you an idea of the average stamp absolutely quality fishing so excellent to get that bream so early on and there are signs out there, the bubbling. I say a lot of it might be the smaller fish, you know, moving the silt. But you'd like to think where that one is, he's not alone. And there we go. That very next cast, it's gone round again. And I say, said at the start, you know, with fishing, it is all about making the most of it. Because you know, whether it's pike fishing, good chub fishing, nothing lasts forever. You can just see that bream coming through the water, that tea colour in the water, and who wouldn't come back on here for quality fishing like this? And what a beautiful bream that is, it's almost got blue in its gill cover. I've been really positive with the feeding, you know, that bigger feeder, putting a bit of bait down, and it's definitely paying off. So you see in there straight away, cast in, put the rod down, we'll get an indication straight away. Got that tip nice and slack, and when you get the bites with them bream, it's just a slow pull around. 
on a drop back he's giving time for the bite to develop you know, there's a lot of other fish in here as well we've got a nice big positive bait on like that and you see that I just give the time for the bite to develop you know them little jags you're not striking at you're waiting for a positive pull round like that they're a bit like chub you've got to make sure you get every one of them in but nice deep water in front of us just take your time bream number three of the day again excellent condition and good quality so fishing with me mate gary and i'll put a link to the bottom of the video to his channel one of the tips that he gave me when he was watching me fishing was to put the rod down away from you a bit like that when you're bream fishing i always held the rod in my hand like i do with the days where the bites are really quick but by putting the rod down it just gives the bite time to develop and you're not inclined to strike at those little quick jags and when you arrive on the river there is the odd bubble coming up all the way down the stretch but it is mad when you start putting the bait in just how condensed them bubbles get and the variety on offer it's a lovely chublet just coming down the middle and yeah on the stick float in a couple of weeks we'll be made up with that won't we And although I'll never tire of Mr. Chubb to the day I die, today we are after Mr. Bream. And after a period of quite a few jagged bites, so it was just a tiny new hook link there. <laughs> the bites were just a lot more jaggedy. And that one was just a solid pull round and the fish is on. You just do get the much more positive bite with them bream. Bream is definitely a lot more silvery, maybe a hybrid. But yeah, great to see um, what a good decision it was to come out this morning for a few bites. And these are great to see, because like I always say, it means the venue's got a future. They are your proper bream in years to come. You see there plenty of bites on that last little piece it's really good fishing you know plenty of action just gone over to that smaller feeder now just to try and you know pinpoint in the swim a little bit of bait and just get them fish to come in well when you don't know how many you've actually had i just know it's been a good morning's fishing and like i said at the start always make the most of it so the bait so far has just been a whole worm and a piece of corn on a size 10 hook nice positive bait we're putting some casters and hemp in the feeder a few maggots and then just capping it with that ground bait so my dad has joined me on the bank today for a bit of company this morning and i got his house at about half past four quarter to five this morning we're on the bank for probably maybe casting at say six o'clock to give you an idea of how good the fishing's been it's just coming up to nine o'clock now so we've been fishing for about three hours it's just exceptional fishing one thing not to be concerned about when you're using a whole worm is the hooking you can see there they're all lip hooked right in the mouth and you can see the size of the bait so yeah don't be worried about using a whole worm There we go there, you see there, <laughs> casting, and that's what I'm talking about on that little pinpoint feeder, just attracting them into that little pile of bait, and it's gone almost instantly. 
And the only way to really describe this fishing is silly, really. My dad did a lot of fishing with me as a kid on the Bridgewater Canal for Bream. And even he's blown away. Cannot believe the quality and just how many bites we are getting. It literally is going within a minute or two of the feeder hitting the bottom. And it's a bit like last week when you're getting the tactics right, the tip's going round. You know, I've shared as many tactics as I can in the video. If you are enjoying it, please hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. It really is appreciated. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to enjoy the last hour or so of the session. The sun's out a little bit, but Mr. Weatherman's not going to be wrong today. The rain is coming at dinner time. So yeah, I'll see you all at the end of the video. And what a lovely bream to end on. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. And what we'll do now, we'll take a look at that final net and see how we've done. So as you can see there in that little piece, what an enjoyable end of the session it was. And as you can see in that final net, a fantastic few hours fishing. At the beginning of the video, I did talk about making the most of the fishing and making hay while the sun shines. It is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in my angling. Nothing at all lasts forever, so make the most of it while it's good if you have enjoyed the video please leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel all that remains is for me and joshua to wish you tight lines in your own fishing and we'll catch you all next week tight, tight lines, lines.